What is up Flutter devs? In our continuing port of processing to Flutter, today we're gonna to implement the drawing of squares and rectangles. Let's get into it. Here we have the spec for the square command to draw a square. You'll see that it takes three parameters, three arguments, an X value, a Y value, and an extent, which represents both the width and the height of a square. Let's go implement this example right here. Back here in code, I have a test file open. It is the 2D primitives test file. You might recall that we've already implemented the support for drawing circles, which is tested right here. I'm going to take this test to draw a circle and I'm going to copy it. I'm going to adjust it for a square. There's one square example. Change the name of the test and the name of the file. But instead of calling circle, we want to call square. Much like the circle command, we're not going to directly replicate the square parameters. Instead of taking an X and a Y independently, I'd rather take an offset. Uh, now this X and Y, let's see what this represents. Draws a square to the screen. By default, the first two parameters set the location of the upper left corner. The way these parameters are interpreted, however, may be changed with the rect mode. Well, that's something worth reading up on. Let's see what that means. All right, so rect mode can take four different values, corner, corners, radius, or center. The rect mode modifies the location from which rectangles are drawn by changing the way in which parameters given to rect are interpreted. The default mode is corner, which interprets the first two parameters as the upper left corner. The third and fourth parameters are its width and height. Corners plural interprets the first two parameters of rect as the location of one corner and the third and fourth are the opposite corner center radius. Well, here's the thing. There's already a rect constructor in Flutter. For, for truly defining the position of a rectangle, it has all the versions that we want. Let's go flutter rect API, open this up. Look at these constructors here. From a center point, given a width and a height. From a circle, given a center and a radius. Left top, right bottom, left top with height, and from points. These are all of the different values that are passed into rect mode. Therefore, for truly drawing rectangles, we should just defer to the rect class. The problem is we are trying to support a square. A square cannot accept a rect data structure because a square is not a rectangle. A square needs to enforce equal width and height. In fact, it's unclear to me like this thing says that that it respects the rect mode but let's say that you're drawing a square and you have rect mode of corners well corners says here's the top left here's the bottom right you can't you can't do that for a square because the position of the bottom right is limited by the fact that it's a square So what would make sense here? The point is that we want the offset that is passed in to possibly represent the top left or the center. Here's what I think we will do. Instead of passing in 
an X position, a Y position, and a width. I think that we will create the concept of a square structure, a square data structure similar to rect. And I think what we will pass in here is square from left top extent. And then we will pass in, what were those two values that I just erased? 30, 20, 55. 30, 20, 55. Because we will also support another one, which is square from center. Uh, and I guess to make this clear, let's, let's have this be an offset just so it's obvious what numbers mean what. The second call, square from center, this will be the center, obviously, and then the width and the height will be this last number. I think this makes sense. However, what this is demonstrating to me is that we should probably implement rect first because this call, well, we'll implement this first. That's fine. We'll implement this first. So again, we want to be able to say, draw a square with this definition of a square. And the reason we need to provide our own square data structure is because processing has this rect mode, which means we would have to interpret the offset in different ways, which is it would be counterproductive once we get to rectangles because there's already some stuff in Flutter to do that. Let's now come into core and we're kind of adding additional reasons here to, uh, to start implementing stuff outside of core, but I'm not ready to tackle that yet. Let's introduce the class called square and we will have square from left top extent where we will take an offset, uh, which is the top left. And then we will take a double, which is the extent, and we'll do something with that. And then we want square from center, which is center and an extent. In terms of our use for this square, I think all we really care about is that we can turn it into a rect because eventually we're going to paint this thing and what we're going to paint is a rect. The important thing is that we constrain it. We, we never let the dimensions, we, we cause the dimensions to always be a square. That's the important part. Eventually though, we're going to want it in the form of a rect data structure so that the canvas can paint it. Therefore, we can have a private rect. And then what we will do is we will say rect, and that will be final. And to rect, we'll just return that rect. And we will say rect equals rect from center. We will pass in the center we were given, and then we will pass in extent and extent. Save that come up here to this other one and do a similar thing. Rect equals rect from left top with height. Top left dot dx. Top left dy extent and extent. Save that. These are the two and only two constructors currently available for a square. And the only thing that this square can do is give us a rectangle. 
Let's go back to the test. Notice that now this line compiles because we've implemented square, the data structure. Now we need to implement square, the drawing command. Let's copy circle and adjust. We will require a square. And actually, we don't even need it to be named in this case because it's the only parameter. Now, again, we do need to draw twice. We need to draw once with the fill and once with the stroke. To uh, Actually, I guess accessing the rect should not be a performance issue because it's not being constructed every time we access it. It's just being referenced. We're going to draw a rect. Draw a rect. And that rect is going to be square to rect square to rect. Now, to rect is probably a bad name. That is misleading because we are not creating a rectangle. We are just serving the one we already have. What I will do instead is I will say uh, rect get rect get rect. That makes it a public property. It cannot be edited and it's final, but you can access it via that property. That should be an implementation for the square command. Everything compiles here. Let's remind ourselves this is what we're looking for on the other side of the command, other side of the test. Flutter, test, plain name, square, right? Square, update, goldens, test, where is this located? It is under shape. In there, let's run that. Should appear right here. Okay. Okay. And there it is. Right there. It's not quite as crisp on the stroke, and I'm not sure why. Uh, eventually, we might figure that out. Maybe they're using a hairline stroke by default or something like that. Something about how it's being painted must be a little bit different, but I mean, we, we've achieved what we tried to achieve. There's nothing wrong with our painting of the square. There's just some kind of difference in how a stroke is being applied. That's something for us to figure out on another day, I think. Okay. That test is done. Let's move over to rect. Now, rect, the reason I left this one for second is because you'll notice that there's also rounded rects. You can have a rectangle with normal corners, a rounded rect where all the corners are the same, and a rounded rect where all the corners are different. So we have three tests that we need to write for rect. Let's take square and let's start replicating. Rect example one. And then we will stub out two and three. There's two. And here is three. Save that. Come back to the first example. Let's implement it. Here's the rectangle for the first one. And it's drawing a square again, which means it's left top width height. That's what this test is showing us. How do we want to actually do that in practice? We want to say s dot rect. Then we want to say rect from left top width height. And it just happens that the width and the height are equal. That is our first test. Now, again, notice I didn't take in all those integers independently because if you want control over how the rect is formed, 
you already have that control right here with the constructor for rect. So we're just going to take one in and we're going to paint it. Let's take square. Now this time I'm going to use named parameters, which I didn't just do in the test, but I'll go update the test. The reason we're going to use named parameters is because there's a second optional parameter for border radius. And it's probably better to name those explicitly. So required, rect, rect, and then optional border radius, border radius. We're going to draw the rect, and we're going to draw the rect. Let's save that. I wish they would leave this on multiple lines the way I asked. Let me do this as a hack. There, now I can't force it on one line. Take that. All right. Pass this in for the rectangle. For the moment, I'm going to comment out the next two tests so we can validate the first one and not generate other files. So here's the same command again, except now we're going for rect. We should get one more file over here when that's done. You know, I guess that plain name, I think it's those parentheses that break it. Maybe it's trying to do some regex, although I thought plain name meant that it doesn't do regex. Okay. Here's the rectangle, which just happens to be a square, which looks like the one that we expect. And so now we get into the more interesting case, the ones with the border radius. Here's the first one. I'm going to uncomment out the second test. Oops, too far. In this case, we want to say s.rect rect from left top with height again. It's the same rectangle, it's just a uh, different border radius. And then for border radius, we want border radius circular seven. That's this seven here at the end of the, the call that we copied. Let's save that. This is going to recreate both of the rectangles because I can't put parentheses in there. Oh, well. Oh, I forgot to actually draw that. This is why we run tests. In this case, uh, with a border radius, we do not want to draw a rect. So if border radius is null, we just draw a rectangle. Otherwise, there is a different command for us, draw rounded rect. And then it wants a rounded rect. Or is it R rect from, let's see, from rect and corners. From rect and radius, probably rect and corners is what we want. So top left is border radius dot top left. Top right is border radius dot top right. Bottom left is border radius dot bottom left. And bottom right is border radius dot bottom right. Then we pass the rounded rectangle in instead of the regular one. Let's save. Let's regenerate the goldens and let's see what we've got. There it is. Now we've got our rounded rectangle, which is supposed to be this one here. Again, some differences in the stroke for whatever reason, but it's doing what we expect it to do. Now here's the third test.
This one has a different amount of curvature for all four of the corners. We're going to say S rect. Uh, the rect is the same rect from left top with height 30, 20, 55, 55. But this time border radius, border radius only. We're going to say top left, I assume is the first one. That's is it, is it radius.circular, I think? We're going to want three more from top right, bottom right, bottom left. Let me make sure that order is correct. Top left, top right, bottom right, bottom left. That is the correct order. And then we want three, six, 12, 18. Save that, remove the to-do, regenerate the rect images, and let's see if we've got what we came here for. And there it is. There's our different corners, rounded rectangle corners, and with that, we have implemented square and rect. Uh, let's go update the readme file. Here is rect, here is square. We are on our way to filling in the 2D primitives. That's great. Let's also make an adjustment, which is in the, uh, in the color tests, in the settings tests, we were using circles in here when we should have been using squares or rectangles or whatever they were. Let me go to fill and let's start replacing these with the actual examples. So very quickly here, the first one should be this rectangle. I guess they're using the same rectangle for everything. And I'll copy that, and that's also going to replace the circle in the other fill test. In no fill, in no fill, the second one is the same, but the first one is 15, 10. This first one is 15, 10. The second one is the same as before. Save that. No stroke is the same as all the others. Here's no stroke. No, sorry, that's stroke example one. Okay, stroke is also the same. All the remainder one, all the remainders are the same. We'll replace these three circles with three rectangles. Save that. And now we're going to replace First, we'll replace fill. Uh, actually, I specified the wrong file there. We want color settings. Okay. Both of those are what we expect now. Let's do no fill. All right, that's what we expect for no fill. Let's do stroke. Unfortunately, he, I, actually, I guess I can't tell if that's the gray that we expect or not. There is, I mean, there definitely is some kind of stroke there. It just looks kind of odd. I don't know. I don't think it's anything that I did. Again, I think it's just a weird application of a stroke for some reason. Let's update no stroke.
All right, and there's no stroke updated. <clears throat> so all the places that we should have used a rectangle now use a rectangle. With that, we have implemented squares and rectangles, and in the next video, it's on to whatever's next.